Hi there, Walton News. I'm Jack, and this is DS1 Newscast. And today, Disney reported their end of year 2023 financial report and also their earnings for the fourth quarter. And the news coming out of it all is that Disney has beaten Wall Street estimates with better earnings than what had been expected, with overall revenue up 5% for the quarter year over year, and total revenue for the whole fiscal year is up 7%, and total operating income is up 86% on the quarter and up 6% percent for the year. But once again, the story coming out of this is the parks and experiences segment is propping up the company's profits. With $8.9 billion of the total $12.8 billion of operating income for fiscal year 2023, coming directly from the parks and experiences segment. And although Disney keeps on dangling this promise of turbocharging the parks, with this being the only area that Disney's making some serious money right now, you'd think that that would be enough of a reason to finally reinvest and greenlight some new projects for the Disney parks over the next few years. Whereas the entertainment division, on the other hand, managed to generate $40 billion in revenue, but only a paltry $1.4 billion of that massive sum was actual operating income for the entire fiscal year. But a bright spot coming out of this for the streaming business is that Disney managed to add nearly 7 million subscribers to Disney Plus for this quarter, bringing their total Disney Plus subscriber number to 112.6 million subscribers worldwide. However, it will be interesting to see what the effect that the upcoming price increase will have on the subscriber numbers in the United States, as the ad-free tier is going to be going up 27% to $13.99, whereas the ad-supported tier will remain at the same price. And so clearly, Disney is following suit with the rest of the streaming market, trying to push more people to join the ad-supported tier to kind of resurrect the old TV model that was more profitable for the studios. But then we come to the other massive news story, which is sure to dominate the rest of the year for Disney. And that is the announcement that they intend to purchase the remaining 33% stake of Hulu from Comcast, giving the mouse house full ownership over the streaming platform. Although, to give a little more context to this whole situation, it's the unusual formation of Hulu that has led to this final deal between Comcast and Disney. As at the beginning, Hulu was a joint venture between Rupert Murdoch's News Corp and NBC Universal, with Disney joining in 2009. But it wasn't until 2011, when Comcast bought NBC Universal, that the three way dance between Fox, Disney, and Comcast began. And it's important to note that these media giants saw Hulu as a sort of hedged bet against Netflix becoming too powerful as the only streaming game in town, as Hulu gave them all a direct to consumer streaming platform to help safeguard the future of TV syndication. Then came December of 2017. And this is where the cracks in the Hulu triangle started to emerge. As thanks to Disney announcing its intention to acquire 21st Century Fox for $52.4 billion, it meant that Disney would gain a controlling two-thirds stake in Hulu. But this obviously didn't sit well with Comcast, and in June of 2018, Comcast attempted to thwart Disney's deal with Fox with a $65 billion all-cash bid of their own for Fox. However, not to be outdone by Comcast, Disney decided to raise their bid to a whopping $71.3 billion to seal the deal. And at the end of all of this wrangling between these two media behemoths, it was plain to see that the Hulu relationship was on borrowed time. So Disney and Comcast decided to enter into a put-call agreement in 2019, where at the end of a designated five-year period in 2024, Both companies mutually agreed that Disney would purchase the remaining one-third stake in Hulu if Comcast chose to sell it. And that's exactly what Comcast triggered on November 1st. So what's happening now is that there's an independent appraisal of Hulu that's being conducted by both Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan Chase to establish what the fair market value of what Hulu is actually worth. As originally, when the put call agreement was put into place, it was with the understanding that Hulu was worth approximately $27.5 billion, which means that Disney is expecting to pay at minimum $8.61 $8.61 billion to Comcast, which represents the guaranteed floor value minus any outstanding capital call contributions. And this evaluation phase is expected to end on December 1st, 
But in the event that Disney and Comcast do not agree on the fair market value, then a third appraisal will be given and the price will be set between the two prices closest in value. And Disney has agreed to pay Comcast the difference. But this doesn't exactly answer the question as to why Disney would want Hulu in the first place. And well, not only does Hulu have a lot of brand cachet and name recognition within the US streaming market, as after all, Hulu was founded in 2007, the same year Netflix debuted their streaming video on demand service. But also, Hulu is uniquely positioned as a bridge between the traditional linear TV model and the core cutting trend that is leading to cable's diminished influence, as Hulu has 4.3 million subscribers of their live TV package, paying on average $91 a month, along with 44 million paid subscribers of their standard streaming service. And if you combine Hulu's 48.3 million subscribers with the 46 million subscribers that Disney Plus has, minus the 40% crossover between the two services, it gives Disney a total US streaming audience of approximately 74.9 million subscribers, meaning that Disney is the only serious streaming competitor to Netflix's dominance in the United States. So clearly buying the remainder of Hulu is Disney metaphorically planting their flag in the ground and taking the fight to Netflix, hoping that their greater content to value proposition will secure their place in the digital media landscape. However, at this point, you're probably all wondering, how is Disney going to afford to pay for this multi-billion dollar acquisition? And well, they do have $11.5 billion in free cash flow that they could use. But instead, it seems that they're opting for a sale of assets to then offset this latest purchase starting with Hotstar in India, which was acquired as part of the $71 billion 21st Century Fox acquisition in 2019. And although this seemed like quite the gain at the time, providing Disney with a direct strategic foothold within the massive emerging economy of India, a vital BRICS nation, it has proved to be a little bit more difficult than first expected. And the reason for this is twofold. First being that Disney has had to invest in very specific content tailor-made to that region that doesn't have much crossover marketing appeal to American and European audiences, meaning that Disney can't get double bang for their buck on that content. Then secondly, and more importantly, although the subscriber numbers sound impressive, they have been a substantial drag on the Disney Plus subscriber to profitability ratio, which is something that Disney has had to reiterate many times within earnings calls. As for an example, there is a huge disparity between the average revenue generated per user of a US and Indian Disney Plus subscriber, as the premium 4K Disney Plus Hotstar service in India converts to only $3.59 a month, which is more than $10 cheaper than the comparable $13.99 a month that Disney Plus without ads is priced at within the US. And so it's this disproportionate weight given to Disney Plus Hotstar subscribers that has made the subscriber losses sound much worse to Wall Street in recent earnings calls. Therefore, where Disney was originally planning to sell off Hotstar on a more piecemeal approach to net around one or two billion dollars, they are now said to be considering selling off most of Hotstar instead. As it's been reported by Reuters that Asia's richest man, Mikesh Ambani, is nearing a cash and stock deal to buy Hotstar from Disney for the total sum of around seven or eight billion dollars. However, Disney is said to want to hold on to a minority stake in any such deal that's done. As after all, it was his Gio Cinema service that outbid Disney for the rights to the Premier League cricket that led to a dramatic 12.5 million subscriber decrease for Disney Plus. And although Hotstar was valued at $16 billion when the Fox acquisition happened in 2019, this $7 to $8 billion would be a significant chunk of money for Disney that would essentially offset most of the Hulu acquisition. And so with Disney supposedly going to be divesting from the Asian streaming market and going all in on the US and European streaming markets instead, that doesn't mean that there isn't more work that needs to be done within the linear content business within the US as there's further streamlining that's expected that will generate billions more for Disney, beginning with ESPN, as there have been some very serious interest from a wide range of potential partners, from sports leagues like the NFL and NBA, to tech firms like Apple and Amazon, and even telecoms companies like Verizon. 
and according to Bank of America Global Research, ESPN is approximately valued at $24 billion. So, assuming that Disney would want to retain majority control over ESPN, with 51% of the 80-20 split that they have with the Hearst Corporation, that would mean that they would be looking to sell 29%, which would net Disney a cool $10.4 billion. Although, importantly, it is said that Disney isn't looking for a buyer to just make some money out of the sale of ESPN, but instead they are looking for a strategic partner that can help them position ESPN for the eventual direct-to-consumer streaming service that will then replace the conventional cable offering, which could be priced at anywhere between $30 to $40 per month. But that's not all, as Disney is continuing to look for a buyer for their linear TV businesses as well, and they've actually been fielding interest from a few parties, with the most recent public offer coming from comedian-turned-media mogul Byron Allen who back in September reportedly made a $10 billion offer to acquire the ABC TV network, FX, and National Geographic cable channels. But to be honest here, I can't see Disney being willing to sell off all of those assets for only $10 billion, as some analysts have estimated that that collection of assets could approximately be $19 billion, and so it's doubtful that this offer will be accepted. However, out of another report, Disney has apparently met with Nexstar executives to discuss the sale of the ABC affiliate news stations, which is said to be estimated at a price tag of around $4.1 billion. But whether it's Nexstar, Sinclair, or someone else, it seems that the ABC regional TV stations are the first assets which will likely be sold, as Disney is continuing to mull over what they're going to do with A&E Networks, FX, Freeform and ABC in the future, as they've still got many options left on the table. And before we wrap up this video regarding Disney's financial situation, I couldn't do it without also quickly mentioning the ongoing activist investor saga involving Nelson Peltz. As for those unfamiliar, Nelson Peltz is the activist investor whose Tryan Fund management earlier this year waged a proxy war under the banner of Restoring the Magic. But the main accomplishment of that campaign ended up being Restoring the Dividends instead. And because Disney has had weak stock performance this summer, Pounce has acquired 30 million more shares of Disney stock, which equates to around $2.5 billion. All with the aim of trying to influence the direction of the company by buying a seat on the board of directors. Although it's important to note that 30 million shares of a total 1.8 billion available represents only 1.6% of all of Disney's stock, making it far from a hostile takeover, but still definitely a headache for Iger. And so we'll have to watch this space as it develops, but it seems that with Iger's latest appointment of Johnston as CFO, he is assembling a team and a strategy to help quell this latest attempt in its tracks before next year's annual shareholders meeting vote to appoint the board of directors for Disney. But now it's over to you, Walters. I would like to know what are your thoughts and opinions about Disney's current financial situation? Were the earnings better than you had expected? Is buying Hulu a good idea or not in your opinion? And also, if you were the CEO of the Walt Disney Company right now, what would you prioritize? And if you've enjoyed this video for today, then be sure to give it a massive thumbs up, subscribe down below, and check out the rest of the videos on the channel. And I also want to give a massive shout out to the official Waltonier Club over on Patreon who helps support this channel with the Waltonier Gold members that you can see here right now, and also Waltonier Diamond member Kyle Mahan. And with all of that being said for today, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.